Schwartz, mm. <laughs> Josh Shield, Hayden Schlossberg. I'm curious, there are tons of pop culture jokes in this. Ones that I loved, uh, the MI6 joke, especially when McKnight said, we just got ghost protocols. I think that's a hilarious way mm -hmm. to use that word. What are some of your guys' favorites and were there some that got cut? Jeez, uh, you know, I think, you know, for us the whole show is an homage to all these action movies that we love growing up, you know, from 80s, 90s, uh, you know, into Mission Impossible and, you know, the, the ghost protocols. So it's uh, the whole, you know, every episode has its own theme to it. So, you know, we tried to, even if we're, there's not an explicit, like, dialogue reference to an action movie, we have the feels of, you know, whether it's in episode four and, you know, the, we're in the desert, you know, and you have this uh, lone survivor kind of, uh, you know, storyline. We're, we're always trying to, you know, pay homage to the action movies that we love. I mean, I, I would say uh, the limo driver. Uh, is a good, yeah, that's a good uh, Easter egg. We uh, put in the finale of the episode, Haggerty is kind of on an island. This is a big spoiler, so don't uh, watch this. <laughs> but, I'll cut it out for okay, you. Okay, yeah, so deep cut Easter eggs that we're not putting a neon light on and mm. calling flashing attention to, but we're hoping, you know, it, it provides another you know, way for an eagle-eyed audience member to find something. One joke I couldn't believe that you guys didn't make was calling uh, McKnight Billy Ray Cyrus. I had to legitimately Google to see if, if that was his son or something. I thought that they looked that much alike. Um, as you touched on, 30 years ago, this would have been a film. Uh, wh who would you have liked to see star in this if it was one of those 80s, 90s films that we both grew up with? I mean, I'd say if, if it was back in the day, Bruce Willis. Mm. I mean, Bruce Willis had the, the action, he had the charm. Uh, we think Nick Zano did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing all that we were looking for with this. He's been an action hero sort of waiting to happen. He's got the looks, that's he's, for sure. He's got, the, he's got the looks for it and he has the sensibility. Yeah. Um, you know, Nick grew up on all the same movies that we all grew up on. So there was an immediate shorthand with us, with him. So, you know, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, Nick Cage, all those guys that we loved, Nick loves as well. So he was trying to like bring that kind of, you know, big action energy while bringing the comedy. So this is an all time pitch, I think. Like the idea of getting drunk, saving the world, getting drunk, finding out you didn't save the world is truly just one of those light bulb type things. Can you guys put me in the room that day when you had that thought and, and, and how it kind of got started? It was really like, I would say like 15 years ago when we thought of the concept of obliterated. It was like before Osama bin Laden got, uh, you know, captured and we were just thinking that, you know, you know, when one of these big military, like, you know, successes happens, you would think that, you know, there'd be like almost a, a party at the end of it because you go through all this effort and put your life on the line that much like when you finish shooting a movie or a TV show, there's like a rap party for like the mission. And we're like, what if you, a, a rap party that, you know, went crazy and everyone got drunk and it was like a company Christmas party gone haywire, but you find out that the, you know, the clock is still ticking and that mm. the, the bomb was a fake. And it was just something that, you know, we we had a lot of other things that, uh, you know, kind of got in the way of what we were doing at the time. And then, you know, we ended up working on Cobra Kai and that brought us into the world of, of television. And while we were, you know, once Cobra Kai became a hit, you know, Netflix uh, came to us and was like, hey, do you have any ideas for something else? And we were like, you know what, there's this concept we've always had and we love the idea of it as a series because it allows you know, our ensemble to all have like great big moments and uh, and you can treat it like 24. I've got to wrap here. So I, I just, I'm, I'm curious about how you guys stay in touch with what you th think is funny because I have a hard time, you know, I'm 30, I can't keep up with what's cool and mm -hmm. what's funny and you know, what, what is gonna make kids today laugh because I imagine you're trying to get the teenagers and the 20 year olds on. So how do you know what's funny still? Because I watched your guys stuff 20 years ago and it cracked me up and it, you're still here doing it. <laughs> well, that's a high compliment. I mean, we, we consider ourselves funny people. We, we make each other laugh. We are always messing around and being immature and uh, foolish. And I think that never goes out of style. Um, and we try to, you know, just look at the world we're in and see what's funny about it. You know, John and I have kids. We, mm -hmm. you know, get a little bit into their world um, in terms of what that they helps. think is funny. And you realize that a lot of it's timeless and uh, a lot of the humor that we, um, that we play with is also just 
a throwback. It's nostalgic. It's stuff that made us laugh 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, 40 years ago that uh, is still making us laugh. And we're hoping that people are either going to connect to that because uh, they are of that generation or we're introducing our humor to a new generation. Got